Now there is some dirty oil. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video on Project Vivaro, our 2004 1.9 CDTI, I think it is. Something like that. Anyway, today we're going to be doing a quick service on it. Uh, we've got just oils, oils, no oil and filters. So we're going to be doing uh, obviously the oil, the oil filter, air filter and the fuel filter. Um, also, I think it's about time we went through and talked about how much this has cost. So obviously I bought it off a friend, so I, he gave me a good price, gave me it at a good price. So um, yeah, well, we'll go through it and we'll see how much it's cost up to this point. Um, and let's see what you think about it. So there we go. Oh, anyway, here it is. It is looking rather, rather high. And uh, no, I haven't off-roaded it. Basically, to get it in the carriage, I've got to put it on wheel dollies. Because um, it just won't, it won't fit. It's too flipping long, this thing. Look how long it is. It's like, it's like a limo. Look at, ooh, Vivara limo. No, no, no. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, we got it on dollies. Basically, I've just put it on blocks at the front. So when we drain the oil and everything, it is level. Um, I haven't warmed it up yet, but I don't want to smoke the place out, so we'll, we'll see. I might have to get a bit of pipe to just run it out and just, I, I don't know, or we might do it cold. I don't know, I'll have a think about that. Anyway, here's the bits we're going to change. As per usual, get it from Eurocar Parts. I'm not sponsored by them, but I always use their promo codes, and it normally works out quite good, and I mean, you get name stuff you know branded stuff and it's as good as it's gonna be so got our oil filter our air filter got the old sump plug because i don't know when it was last changed and what the seal's gonna be like and then the fuel filter which i'm hoping is the right one because there's a couple different versions of this so i hope so if not i'll be going back and changing it but yeah, and then we just got normal oil. I can't remember how much goes in it, so I'll have to look that up. But here's all the parts anyway. And if you do like what we're doing here and find it really enjoyable or useful, please give us a that way a thumbs up. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. I haven't warmed it up because I couldn't find a bit of pipe that would go out the door and. It's a diesel and it'll smell horrible. So anyway, we'll just leave it draining for a long time. So this is the 1.9 CDTI 2004. Yours may, may look the same, may look a bit different, but uh, this is mine anyway. So first of all, behind them three screws is the air filter. That is the fuel filter on the left there. So I have to work out how to get into that. Not really sure at the moment. And we drip. Does everybody's drips from there? Mine's dripping from from there. Don't know why. Uh, oil filter down in the depths down there. And what else have I got? Air. air. Oh, oh, and oil, <laughs> which is obviously in the bottom. So I have to get underneath. And uh, first things first, I think, is drain the oil. <laughs> well, our first issue is. The square drive for the sump, which naively, naively I thought would be 3.8 drive, is not. It's about 8mm. I haven't got an 8mm drive or an adapter or anything. But I have got the square steel that goes through a door handle, which is about 8mm. So uh, <laughs> that's going to have to do with a pair of adjustables on it, quite literally. <laughs> Hello. Right, so the sump plug is here. Oh, I'm just gonna put the light shining up at it. They're a bit mucky around there. So there's a bit of a oil leak somewhere. I have taken 
the under tray off. That was just a, a few screws around the edges. Um, but it's still a bit of a tight squeeze from the under here. And I have our bowl. So let's see if we can get this undone with this Heath Robinson sort of deal. I think I'm going to have to order some square drives, aren't I? Oh, he's tight. Oh, that is tight, tight. Let's put it a bit closer. Cool. It's twisting it. Twisting it. Let's try the other end. Let's try again. Oh, that's not turning. <coughs> nope. Look. That shouldn't be that tight, should it? All right, let's, um, plan B. Right, hello, we're back. And I've got myself a little set. Got these from Halfords. Um, so yeah, let's try them out. I know it's designed to use a bar. If you can see me there, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick it in my socket and I've got a bit more leverage. So let's see if we can bust this one loose now with a bit of leverage. Oh, blimey, that was tight. Didn't need to be that tight, did it? Let's see how much of a mess I can make. I'm bound to drop it, aren't I? That's back. Yeah, definitely nice and black. Oh, that doesn't look too bad. Sorry if I'm flashing it. Hmm. Oh, that tastes horrible. That's flipping diesel. Disgusting. All right, let's let that drain for a while. Um, I think it's time for a cup of tea. You guys at home, don't taste the engine oil. It's not good for you. The trick is stick that finger in and then quickly swap that one, stick it in your gob. It's a good trick, but it don't do it wrong because it's horrible and probably quite bad for you. So we're waiting for that to drain. I don't know if you can see me or not. But next we will get the oil filter, which is up there. So I'm hoping I can get my hands. Oh, sorry. Hands up there. I don't, I haven't got a clue what you can see now. So I do apologize if this has gone all squiffy. Should be hand tight, but judging ah, that some plug, it's not. So I have got a chain wrench thing. Not the easiest of things. Which way has it got to go? That way. I can never work these things out. Um, especially when I'm upside down. That one, they? Something like that. Let's try it if I can get my hands on that. Oh, always stick your tongue out, always helps. Right. May take some time. Bear with.
Wow, that was tight. Shouldn't ever, ever be that tight. Blimey. Oh. Right, I've just got to try and not make it run up my arm now. Where's my pot? Lost my pot. There it is. Crazy. I'm just gonna hopefully under it, let it drain a bit. Preferably in the yep, it's draining. Let's undo a bit more. Yeah, well, I actually pierced it with this. I forgot I had this. So I wish I remembered I had it first of all and used this one, but still, that was real heaving on that one to get it to go. That's a bit naughty. Should only ever be hand tight. That one was not hand tight. Right, let's try not to make too much mess with this. It's gonna be messy. Horrible black, old diesel oil. Of course, it's slippery as hell. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Send it. Come on, you. Yep. Oof. All right, let's leave that then. Definitely lunch time. See you back. So we've had a nice bit of lunch. That is still dripping under there. And actually, I made a right mess. Uh, you can't see it, but yes, I, uh, when I uh, crawled out, um, I must have knocked the bowl and it kept dripping beside it. So uh, I'm human. Anyway, let's go on with the rest of it while that's still dripping. Um, let's do the fuel filter. So I'm just looking at this. I'm looking at, I think that must be a little drain underneath. See, there's a little drain. I don't know if you can see, but that's my finger is wiggling. It looks like a drain. It turns, so let's hope we can drain the fuel. Um, and that looks like some sort of a vent. And then we should be able to take these bits off and unscrew the top with that maybe I don't really know well let's take it apart and find out shall we that looks I'm not sure that is that's a tea something in there so yeah I'll set you up on a little stand and we'll see what happens so we've got the right filter so that's a t30 on top now I do apologize if we're getting your way or not you but obviously we're in the engine bay so I'm just gonna oh all right that's late gurgle in then, it's a bit weird. Let's, um, let's see if it lets some out. Ah, there we go. Well, looks nice and clean. We all float some water on it, so yeah, there's no, uh, no water in that by the looks of things. I shouldn't need to drain all of it, I'm hoping not, I need not to drain it. I'm hoping that I just can let a little bit of the fuel out and then undo that top. Uh, let's unplug some stuff now while we've got that there. That's the feed. That must be to the pump, that one. Come on, there we go. Yeah. Right, let's try popping that one off. Let it dribble out there, and out to the one side, and then this is the feed because it's got the bulb on it. Press the little green button, push it down, and hopefully that should come out. 
don't want to force anything. Let's... Come on. Let's pop that round the back there out of the way. So, in theory, that lid should just come off with that little T30, I think. Only one way to find that. It's loose. Okay, that's got a seal on it there. And the new kit on the new um, filter comes with a seal, so that's good. That will be in a safe place. Let's lift this off. Remember what orientation it was in. Remember, you were like that. And then the filter. Oh, cool. look at the muck on top of that. Can you see that? I'm going to shake you around a little bit, sorry. Look, see, it's quite mucky on top. I think that's been there a long time. Sorry, I'm shaking you again. Do apologise. You there? Yep. Let us see. Um... There's that seal. I've got a new seal with the kit as well. Let's walk that off before I forget. And then I'm guessing this should just pull out. Oh, she's mucky. That needed doing. Limey. All right, let's take this out and the pot. And I just realized my hand is both sides of the strut. All right, a bit of jiggling. Good, oh. I'm just gonna grab a torch. Make sure we got nothing in the bottom there. That looks good, nice and clean. Actually, it looks good in there. It's a hair in there or something. Yep, all good. Now, it's the same size of filter, so we should be cooking on gas. If I pop that one in. That's that seal I was talking about. Got a new top seal here. Sits in nice and easy. Now the lid, which has actually got a lug at the back there. So it can only go on a, a few different ways when I look at things. Oh no, it can go on lots of ways. But uh, was it there? Looks about right to me. Let's whip that seal off and swap this over. I can't open it with gloves on. Sorry, I'm waffling on here. You can't see me talking, but you know. <laughs> Sorry. Let's pop that in. I don't know where I put my spanner, my um, ratchet, there it is. Here it is. Let's nip that one down. Sorry if this is a bit boring for you guys. I kept talking, I could have done it on time lapse, couldn't I? That's nipped. Right. That's good. So. Next, we really, let's check these are tight, and that's tight, yep. We could do with priming that filter, um, the rag. 
Just stick a rag underneath and get some of the air out of it. There we go. Right, so we're, what I'm doing there is if the normal turn is not very good, if you squeeze that one, push the air out and then put your finger over the end, it will definitely draw up. I can feel that drawing up now. So we're filling up that filter body. See, I can... Ah, that valve's working now. I would say that was primed. Let's pop that one back on quick. Oh, All right. Oh, I've made a mess. Right. Just plug that plug back in. Oh, that's a lot of diesel. Put that one back in. That's all right. Everything's tight. That's that filter done. That's that one all done. And you can see there's no air bubbles in that line. So. That's just priming that as has done the job there. If there's air bubbles or so, anything, I could see there's fuel in there previously. Really, you want to bleed this out. Um, you don't want air in that really, but that looks good to me. Just need to wipe up all my mess and then do the air filter, which is that way. <laughs> one more thing, I forgot there was a little air bleed on this side, so I'll just crack that one open and give it a little pump. Oh, there's just fuel there, that's right. We should. Be good then. Next up, the air filter. Just three screws. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think. Um, yeah, we're definitely, definitely due a service, don't you? I don't want to get any debris in it. But yeah, that's um, well past its sell by date. Uh, let's get the other one in there. Oh, just drop it in. That's a nice, nice new one. Slip it in. So the actress to the bishop. Right, that goes in there nice and snug. Oh, quite firm in there actually. Well, that's good. Let's um, put it back in the way it came out. He says, why not going down? Why aren't you going down? Cool. Should you be that tight? Let me see, let me see. I can't see any amiss, so I think I just need to push it harder. It's not catching on anything. This is a non-standard screw in the middle, but as long as it does the job. That's it. Right, let's have a look down below, see if we stop dripping and uh, put a, the oil filter and some oil in it. Right, we're nearly there. It's, I say we're nearly there. There's just the tiniest little drip coming out. So I'm going to take that i might actually at some point do another oil change when uh euro car parts have got a special deal on for oil and things i might do another oil and filter just because uh 
this was pretty mucky and you know if it's cheap enough and it keeps you going why not you know it's you know when they have their special deals on you can get oil pretty cheap so i'm just going to do this one up this has now got a crushable copper washer on so that shouldn't need to be too tight and we've got our oil filter here which i can't pre-fill because it is at that sort of angle but i am going to nick a little bit of the old oil and just lubricate the seal because you should just a tiny bit just wet it like i say normally i'd fill this but there's no way i could fill it up and then probably pour it all over my arm when i put it back in there's my torch so i'm going up there i've actually checked to make sure that the old seal is not on there because sometimes the old seal will get stuck especially if it was that tight and you put a seal on a seal and they can pop off you lose all your oil so that's not a good idea so let's just pop this one up it's going to be a bit sort of by feel there she is right i don't know which hand i'll do left hand right so Hand tight, don't need any more than that. We'll keep an eye on it when we put oil through it or when we start it, but hopefully that should be fine. Um, now I think I'm ready for a massive clean up under here where I missed and uh, put some new oil in. Time to put some oil in. Um, I've looked it up and it's, as far as I can tell, it looks like it's around about 4.6 litres if that sounds right let's hope so because this holds five litres i've got a funnel in there because i can't do the old bluetooth funnel so hopefully we get most of this in Looks about right. I'll shall get that out and dip it, and we shall see. Check it. See what we got. There we go. Right on the top there. Now, when we start up, obviously we put a new oil filter in, so and we couldn't pre-fill that. So uh, what we'll do is we'll run it up, well we'll just start it and then we'll check it after it's settled down a bit. I don't know why I'm doing this, I'm just smearing, smearing diesel around. There we go. Alright, uh, next up, let's open the barn doors and try it. Right, let's give it a start, see what happens. You can hear me okay, but I can't see any leaks from anywhere. Sounds nice enough for a uh, dirty old diesel. Yeah, sounds good. While we're waiting for that to cool down, we can recheck it again. Let's look at what we took out. So, this is the air filter. That's, um, I'd say that's pretty bad fuel filter that's, <laughs> that's I'd say that's not been changed in a fair time it's not because it's wet this is wet at the top as well look at it and obviously the oil filter was far too tight I actually punctured it trying to get it out and it's sort of look, you can't even see the seals compress the seal like anything 
There we go. That's what we took out. Got all new in there. It's good. Oh, and another thing. Got these from Halfords today. Uh, now, a lot of people diss Halfords. Let me turn around. A lot of people diss Halfords, and I always used to. But I've got a few of their professional range tools now, and uh, I'm quite impressed. But uh, obviously, they're not the cheapest around. But you can get a Halfords trade card. Now, I'm not in the mode to trade, and I've got one. And I got mine from, oh, it was an electrical exam I did years and years ago, electrical installation or something like that. But if you go on a website and look at the trade card details, there's lots of different trades, not just auto trade, that can get a trade discount card. And obviously it's good for batteries because Halfords, is, when you need a battery, you need a battery. Halford is generally open to eight o'clock weekdays, Sundays and that a bit earlier, but you know, I'm, I am not sponsored or anything by Halfords. It's just what I go by what I do and I've got a trade card and like that today I went down there, they had it on stock, got it, got a trade discount on it and it worked out being £13 for that kit I think or something a little bit less than that and because I signed up to the wrong, their email thing they gave me a £10 voucher. So you know I'm not, check them out. They might help you out. Have a look on their website. See if you're on any of the trades. Get a trade card. Waffle over. All right, guys, we've got a few moments. I think we should go through how much Project Vivaro, Vinny, has actually cost us. Now, I've got a list here. I don't know how much you can see. I ain't got a clue, but if you want to pause, you can see that, but I'll read it out. There's quite a few things on there. Um, and we'll go through like I say, what it's cost. Look, dirty diesel finger. Don't you hate that? Anyway, <laughs> um, so the, the original van I bought off a friend, Neil, thank you very much, £800. And that I thought was a really good price, especially, you know, where we are at the moment. Uh, cleaning supplies initially I've put down as £15. Um, <laughs> I had three puncture repairs I had to do. Um, two punctures as such, screws and nails and then also the um, one of the rims was rusted through and it was leaking through the rim and it took us a while to find that one so I had to get another wheel so I got a second hand wheel um, and I think I got a set of four for 20 quid so it was 35 quid for the punch repairs 20 quid for the uh, the spare wheels or wheel uh, check strap for the door that was 10 pound from eBay uh, central locking contactor that was £32.90. I think I bought that through a Vauxhall online dealer, if I remember rightly. Um, next we had the Wishbone Kit. Obviously we, we did a video on that. Uh, that was £79.75, which sounded a really good deal. But I'm not happy with the quality of the rubbers on the track rod ends. They've actually split. And when I had an MOT, within, I don't know how many, it wasn't a matter of months of fitting them, I had a, um, an advisory that they were split, so I've actually changed those rubbers to the, the, the track rod ends that I took off, which were perfect. So I've kept the track rod ends, but swapped the rubber, the rubber what are they called, gaiters over. But yeah, I was a bit disappointed. I got hold of the eBay seller on that sort of three or four times, and I've had no response, because obviously it's beyond the leaving feedback date. So I'm not happy with that. So, you know, buy suspension parts off eBay with caution, um, but it is sorted now, so it should be okay. Um, and also on eBay, I've got the sway bar bushes, which were, um, they were male, male, German ones. Uh, they were £17.59. Uh, the single seat parts, which I had to nick bits off of, um, and also I still have a spare base and a seat in pieces which I was going to put on there I was going to have two single seats but changed my mind because the double seat comes in so handy uh, that was 50 quid the double seat uh, was 130 pounds which sounds a lot but it also came with a base swivel which I was going to sell at the time but now I'm going to fit that because me and Mandy are going camping end of July, beginning of August, something like that. Anyway, 
in a few weeks time so I'm going to fit that. I might even do a video on it actually. Uh, tell us what you think if you want a video on that. But yeah, so 130 quid for that. Wheel trims and stickers of eBay. They are £22, £21.98. Uh, door trims. Sorry, no. Door trim clips. These are the side ones. They were £3.28 and the body trim clips were £6.50. Sliding door seal. The door seal was £25. Trim screws for the steps and the such like was eBay. That was £11.45. The door seal was from eBay as well, sorry. Um, the wind deflectors off eBay, the Hika ones, £22.25. Reversing sensors, which, yeah, I might have done a video on it already, I'm not sure. We'll see when this turns out. I'm going to fit them anyway, if I haven't. Um, but they were £9.99 off eBay. Real, real cheap ones. I, forgot, I put them on my Golf years ago and they're still good. Uh, service parts, which we've just done, which was all from Eurocar Parts. That was £53.26. Uh, all the paint. So I had some spray cans of paint for the back bumper and I'd done uh, the door step here and the sort of sill below the sliding door. That was from Holford's. That was £33.14. Uh, liquid, mo uh, liquid Molly. Oh, I can't remember what it's called now. Liquid Molly, the, the engine treatment. Um, I've actually done two lots of that now. I did one straight through and straight after I well, I ran the tank right down, put some in and then filled it up. So I've done two lots of Liquid Molly and that's £15.50. I think those were from Amazon. Uh, sliding door runners, uh, both the bottom front and the middle back, both from eBay, two separate se sellers, but uh, it was £18.90 for two for both lots. Uh, handbrake adjuster, which was it was all twisted, if you remember. That one was £13.6p, that was dealer. Uh, hazard switch, £4.74 off of eBay. MOT was 50 quid. And free stuff, we had the sound deadening, which was I had was given me years ago from a friend. Uh, and the underfelt and the carpet was actually left at our house when we moved in. So the grand total so far is £1,479.29p, so 1500 quid. Now obviously I've spent time on it, I haven't counted any of that because it's my van and I don't work like that, I'm, I'm not a trade. But 1500 quid, 1500 quid fully MOT'd, pretty much sorted, everything works, everything works quite well, touch wood. Um, what do you think? Put a, tell us down below what you think about that price, 1500 quid. Is that good for a van like this? I mean, it's, it doesn't look bad actually. I mean, there's a couple of things I'd like to change. Uh, if, you know, if push comes to the shove, I might get the front bumper sprayed because it's a bit, a bit knocked about and that. And I've toyed with maybe, I don't know if you've had a few answers, on, well, a few notes on this, about maybe doing a bit of a swamper going not full off-road tyres, but more off-roady than road tyres. Because if you've got a van and you've ever driven on a wet grass and that, they get stuck so easy, don't they? So I don't know if it's because the tyres are hard or something. But again, tell me what you think about doing a little bit of a swamper on it. Um, not necessarily even have to lift it, but maybe do. Um, I would like to keep steels. I wouldn't like to go alloy wheels, I don't think. Um, but maybe ban them, like on Buckley. But yeah, so tell us what you think. Right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me on another Vivaro adventure. With a dirty finger. <laughs> I have to get some petrol or something, I'll get that out. But there we go, I won't show you a message. She'll go, ooh, adorable. I'm waffling, sorry. Yes, thank you very much for watching. If you found this at all, entertaining or useful please give us a thumbs up uh, look us up on instagram larks underscore workshop always some sneaky peeks going on there and there's a lot of stuff on there that don't end up on youtube it's just me being me really and i hope to see you all soon take care cheers then we've got to open the doors and fire her up the barn doors that is and that i buggered right up
Now there is some dirty oil. <laughs> 